Alrighty, you click the thumbnail so you know what we're doing. Let's get into it. Unscrew the three screws holding in the Fender logo. Place the logo and the screws to the side for safekeeping. Turn the amp around as most of what we're going to do from here on out is going to be removing components from the backside. The first thing that I'm going to try to do is take the speakers out. Depending on what model of amp you're working on, you may have different attachments to the baffle board. On this one there's a stud sticking through with nuts supporting the back side of the speaker. It's a good idea to take a picture of the speaker wiring configuration so that whenever you're putting this back together afterwards you have a good reference. Alright, remove the speaker wiring from the speaker terminals by either wiggling them with your finger or taking a pair of needle nose pliers and gently pulling. To be able to access all the nuts to remove the speakers, I'm going to have to take off the bottom back plate. I had quite a search trying to find the right tool for the job to remove the nuts from the speakers, but eventually I would find it. Alright, so I went ahead and took the reverb tank out, and now it looks like I've got one, two, three screws on the bottom holding the baffle board to the frame, and then it's going to kind of be tough to see what this is. So there's one up in that corner, if it will focus for me. Now, you're just going to take my word for it. Another one up in that corner. Um, yeah, this is kind of a dumb design. It's, uh, it's really not super easy to get this off. So to get to those top two screws in the corners, I am going to have to remove the top back plate. I'm also going to have to remove one of the tubes. Initially I thought it would be easiest to remove the speakers before removing the baffle board, but after taking this much apart and seeing that there's only five screws holding the baffle board in, I think I'm just going to take it out and then remove the speakers after. I have recently acquired this amp and it was already in this condition when I bought it, so I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to clean out some of the filth that's built up over the years. All right, we can finally remove the speakers. Make sure you're keeping everything tidy and know which screws go with which parts. This will really save you a lot of time whenever you're putting everything back together. Now we need to remove the staples that are holding the damaged grill cloth to the baffle board. I'm sure that there's a tool like a staple puller or something that would make this much easier, but I'm going to do it with a flathead screwdriver and a pair of linemans. This was by far the longest part of the repair process. Uh, had I known it was going to take me as long as it did, then I probably would not have done it in August at noon in Arkansas in my garage with no AC. So, fat boy's about to start sweating. In addition to the staples, there's also some adhesive that they use to hold the grill cloth onto the baffle board, so you'll have to rip it off pretty forcefully. As far as ordering a new grill cloth, there's a lot of different options. I used speakerbuildersupply.com. Uh, theirs seemed to be the most fairly priced, and it looked exactly like the original. Now lay out the grill cloth and place the baffle board on top of it. Uh, I chose to try to line up one of the edges. I probably should have tried to line up the top a little bit better than I did because the pattern didn't end up being perfect, but it's good enough to wear on stage. No one's going to be able to see the difference. So now all you got to do is start stapling. Keep it taut as you go. Do the opposite side after you finish one side. 
cut off the excess as needed. As far as the corners, I try to just kind of do it like a Christmas present, but as long as you keep everything tight, it's going to look fine. I used a hammer to just lightly tap down the staples to make sure that there was nothing that was sticking out that could catch. I'm going to give the speakers a once over with the shop vac and then it'll be time to put it all back together. Did I mention that it's August in Arkansas and it is really freaking hot in my garage today? Alright, final touch, put the logo back on. You may or may not be able to find the original screw holes, but just make your own. Uh, the screws are small enough to where they'll self-tap into the wood. Alright, there we go. Good as new. No one will be able to tell the difference. Appreciate you sticking around to the end of this video. Please hit all the buttons that YouTube wants you to hit, and I'll see you next time.